You'll never color your work the same ever again after watching this video. So if you've ever struggled with color, this technique is perfect for you. I've been experimenting with a specific color workflow and I want to show you what I found because I think it's really interesting. So what I've been doing is actually not coloring my work at all. I've been creating grayscale work and then using effects in After Effects to color them. And I'll be showing you some examples of that later, but first you may be asking if there's actually any real benefit to this kind of workflow. So let's start with a basic example so I can show you how awesome this work Workflow is. So here we have a circle with a grayscale gradient. And now let's add an adjustment layer and a curves effect. And the curves effect allows us to isolate red, green, and blue values and adjust their influence using this line. You'll see if we change this drop down to red and click and drag on this line, we can affect the red hues in the scene. So if we move the graph line to the left of the middle line, we increase the red hues. And if we move the graph line to the right, we decrease the red hues as you can see. And to explain further how this works, the bottom of this line will affect the darkest tones, so the blacks in this case, the middle of the line will affect the mid-tones, the grays, and the top of the graph will affect the lightest tones, the white area in this example. Now let's use this knowledge to color this object and I usually like to start with the red and I'll mess around with the three points on this graph. And what's great about this is that it's so easy to experiment with color. So after adjusting the red, let's go to the green graph line and play around with that. The same with the blue and we can just keep playing around with these graphs until we get something we like. And look how interesting the colors are. And there are two key points I'm trying to demonstrate. Number one is just how easy it is to get something interesting, just moving some graph lines around. Number two is that when you adjust each graph like this, the colors mix, often in unexpected ways. And that is the magic because you can end up with some color palettes that are really unique or different to what you would ordinarily be drawn to. And if that wasn't enough, there is one more interesting thing I want to show you. But if you're already getting excited about trying this workflow with your next animation, but you don't know what that is yet, let me tell you about the Motion Practice Quest, the best way to practice motion design and create work you're proud of. This program does not spoon feed you the answers like most courses where you end up creating the same animation as a thousand other people. You can use it to create work that is distinctly yours from your brain. So you can use it to create work for your portfolio that makes you stand out in the job marketplace or helps you attract new or better clients. Imagine a world where you've created all these new personal animations, your reel is exploding with awesome work and your Instagram likes are through the roof, making you the sexiest motion designer that everyone wants to get their hands on, sometimes in inappropriate ways. Well, that could be you by going on the motion practice quest. Check out the link in the description. Now back to this example. You may be thinking, Cameron, I could have come up with that sexy gradient all on my own because I'm just better than you. Well, firstly, that's bullshit because everyone wants to put their hands on this sexy motion designer in very inappropriate ways. But let's pretend you're right for a moment. So here is a shape layer where I've replicated this gradient. And I'm indulging you because there's something else I want to show you here. So let's add another adjustment layer with a fuss box blur and increase the blur. Now let's move that below our curves adjustment layer and look at what happens to each of these objects. On the left, we're getting a basic uninteresting blur, but on the right where we have our curves adjustment layer, the blur has created more mid tones, which are now being colored with our curves layer. And the result is really interesting and complex. So if you were to color a whole scene like this, which had a bunch of blurred areas, the result would be far more interesting than if we had colored everything before adding blurs. And as I mentioned at the start, here are some examples which showcase this. To start, we have this black and white style frame. And I also want to emphasize here that there are many benefits to starting an illustration or a style frame in grayscale because you don't overcomplicate things with color and you can just focus on the values and the contrast. If something looks good in grayscale, you can be sure it's going to look good in color. So even at the design stage, there are benefits to this workflow. This even applies when you start animating. So getting your movement right before adding colors and effects is a really good idea but I'm planning another video to fully cover this particular topic, so like and subscribe if you want to catch that. Moving on, here is the colored version of this where I added an adjustment layer, and this time I also want to show you the CC tone effect to color work. This is another way to color your work by specifically selecting colors for each tone. This is still a great choice because you get unexpected results when these tones mix, as you can see in this example, but of course you need to have some sort of palette in mind. So a good workflow is to start with the curves effect and then get to a place you're happy with and then you can color pick the colors from the CC tone effect so you can make fine adjustments. 
Here is the final example and for this one I wanted to show you the basis of this technique because it is actually a common thing to do in Photoshop. So here is a grayscale image and once again we can use a curves adjustment layer to change the colors in the same way we do in After Effects. So when making new work you may want to experiment first in Photoshop with your style frame and this is a great way to do that. And if you wanted to bring that into After Effects you could do that by selecting import, file and selecting the Photoshop file making sure that you import as composition, retain layer sizes, and set the layer options to editable layer styles. You'll see that we can go into the comp and there's now an adjustment layer with the curves effect that we can adjust directly in After Effects. And that's everything I wanted to show you. I hope it helps you create some really awesome color palettes. And again, if you're frothing to test it out and create some sexy personal work, check out the Motion Practice Quest in the description below.